Hi, I'm Mac Payton for Norse Media. We're here at Cincinnati Comic Expo 2015. I'm here with my friend Holland Rains. Let's check it out. Friend. Friend. Ugh. The Cincinnati Comic Expo is a one weekend fan experience of everything pop culture. I mean, we have movies, we have TV stars, we have posters, we have games, we got t shirts, anything that anybody was ever a fan of. We try to put together on one roof and we try to give people a unique experience of something they may never experience anywhere else, right here under one roof for an entire weekend. I used to travel to a bunch of conventions all over the country, and I eventually, in 2010, our first year, I said, well, I want to bring something like this to Cincinnati. So I got together with my best friend Matt and we started Cincinnati Comic Expo and it's grown every year since. Cincinnati Comic Expo is Cincinnati's original and largest comic book convention. Fans from all over came out, dressed up, and got to meet artists, celebrities, and other fans. As for the convention, what are you guys most excited about? Anything in particular? Uh, I just like getting here, seeing all, you know, everyone decked out in all their costumes and getting cool stuff. Yeah, they have a lot of comic books too, this one, more than I think other conventions I've been to, so that's awesome. So what are you, what are you planning on doing here today? Um, just meeting people, going to a lot of panels, um, looking forward to Sean Astin's panel. I love it. This is what it's all about. What gets me excited is when I see a young kid seeing a cosplayer dressed up in costume and their, their eyes just get all wide open and it's like, oh my gosh, it's Iron Man or it's, it's Captain America or oh, it's Luke Skywalker. And to me, seeing that is why I keep going. What was the, uh, what was the inspiration for your costume? Um, my son every year, whatever my son wants to be, I try to go out and find something that goes along with him. So this year he wanted to be Star-Lord. So this year I'm Groot. So, Deadpool. I know that you're the real Deadpool. Where'd you get the outfit from? Uh, I got the actual costume from Amazon and then all the parts and pieces that go to it. Same thing, Amazon, most of the place. And then uh, Target. Target. Uh, so how did, you, uh, how did you come up with the idea for your costume? Um, I love the character. I love the movie. And uh, just started going from there. Some fans weren't just dressed up for the fun and festivities, though. The speeder bike pit crew dressed up for a cause. Uh, well, we consist of members from uh, the three main groups uh, from the Star Wars costuming community. That is the 501st, the Mandalorian Mercs, and the Rebel Legion. And basically, we are this year um, putting together money for donations, strictly, uh, for families with ASD, that's Autism Spectrum Disorder. Um, all, of our, all of our donations go 100% directly back to families with ASD. Um, many of our members, we actually have several that do have uh, children with autism and uh, it's just kind of a really nice donation for us to do. Fans could donate money to take a picture with some of the props from the Star Wars movies, shoot stormtroopers and bounty hunters with nerf guns, and have their friend arrested in the speeder bike pit crew's jail and bail. So jail and bail is say you want to take your friend and you want to put them in jail. Five minutes. You give us five dollars. Um, they, we arrest them, put them in the jail. Five minutes. They can either spend the entire five minutes there or say they want to get out early, they only want to spend two minutes in there, they give us $3 back. We now made $8 for families with ASD. Fans got the chance to see props from other favorite TV shows and movies, including the door to Sherlock Holmes's London flat and the DeLorean from the Back to the Future movies. In addition to these experiences, attendees could play laser tag, attend a Back to the Future themed dance, and could even try to meet their better halves at sci-fi speed dating. It's kind of like regular speed dating, except we mix a little stand-up comedy in and here, at least at a convention, you know you're bound to find somebody with similar interests. In traditional speed dating, you could be you could be a free-spirited hippie and stuck in a room with 50 blood-sucking lawyers and maybe not have anything in common. At least here, even if you're a Star Wars fan or a Star Trek fan, you understand that and you can build from it. Has it been pretty successful at the different conventions and expos you've been to? We've always got a pretty much a packed house. We do real well. We're at um, 63 marriages. Uh, actually, a couple just came up to me a little while ago and said, we got engaged, we met here three years ago. So we're now at 44 engaged couples. Um, we just had the 19th baby. Go Carrie, go Matt. I got a phone call from a guy who says, hey, I just want to let you know I did your speed dating a couple conventions ago and we're engaged now. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh, it's working? Um, so we, we do pretty well and we have a blast doing it. And of course, what would a comic book convention be without artists and other geek artisans? 
Okay, so we're here with uh, Kiki Jenkins, correct? And you said you're from Chicago. How was the ride down? Um, well, it was an overnight train ride, and I didn't sleep, and I haven't been to sleep in two days because I found out I was coming here two days ago. So it's like I'm like all over the place right now, but it was okay. I just took the Amtrak. It was all right. So when you go a few days without sleep, does that kind of get the creative juices flowing, or do you uh, draw some like really weird stuff? Oh, uh, I draw lots of weird stuff. Like um, you kind of go through these phases when you're like sleep deprived, where at first you're like really tired, but then you get really manic, and like you start like thinking up crazy shit. So looking at your artwork, it's it's pretty. It looks pretty varied. Like we have like this Art Nouveau style with the with Evangelion, and then we have some like more kind of cartoony. Is, is that all based on like just how you're feeling at the time, or is it you trying to interpret these characters in like a different fashion? Um, I think it's a mix of both. Um, I really love Art Nouveau, and I think it brings like a certain classiness to any image. Um, but I, it's also like about how I'm kind of feeling that day. Like I really love. I have like a certain style that's my style. You know, like people say this is your style. But I love trying new and different things because that leads me into um, developing something really unique that hasn't been seen before. This uh, Soda line is based on the Dead World comic series, which has been published since 1986. So there's over 100 issues out. And so it was a successful comic, so we decided to branch out and we decided to go with Soda. Uh, there's 12 different flavors. We name them like Brain Sap and Twilight Shuffler you know, uh, for the different flavors to try to tie in with the zombie theme. Mostly we're hitting uh, horror conventions. This is actually the first true comic convention uh, we've done. We've only been doing shows for a couple months. This is the first really big um, comic convention and the response has been much better than we expected. I come from a background of uh, doing and teaching primitive skills. Okay. Uh, I used to tan traditional brain tan buckskin. It's primitive leather that's been, it's the original leather probably. Been done the same way for tens of thousands of years. Uh, I used to do that, and then my caveman side and my geek side kind of collided, and I started doing art. Uh, I used to teach people how to use an entire animal, so when we tanned the skin, and then like, you know, what do we do with the eyeballs? Well, I read somewhere you could use it for paint, so let's do it. So by doing a little bit of experimentation like that, that's how I started. And then one day I made a map of Middle Earth. Um, so I try to stick to kind of a primitive feel. So I still work with the traditional buckskin, so everything you see is, is done on that. Um, it's all handmade leather, it takes a long time to make. Um, more a lot of elbow grease <laughs> to do it. Um, and then I burn on it, that's kind of a non-primitive part. So I burn with pyrography tools by hand and then paint. And if, I, if, it, if the piece is painted, it's painted with natural pigments using primitive tools. Um, this is pretty much my brush, it's just a piece of deer bone that I use as a, as a brush or, or sometimes I finger paint. But that's pretty much it. 